Hey guys, welcome back to The Peyton Project. I wanna talk about something that comes up in a lot of my styling sessions with people, and that is these preconceived ideas that we have about certain pieces of clothing. And I also wanna talk about stylish swaps that you can make to up your style game every single day. So, I notice when I do these sessions with people, because I work with people virtually on Zoom and in person all the time, people are really skeptical when it comes to making alterations to their very casual clothes. Americans in general, super cash, but what that is doing is it's kind of like you're, we end up living in leggings and hoodies and then kind of playing cosplay adults when it comes time to act, like actually have to put on clothes. And a lot of people want to kind of take those steps out into trying to become more stylish, but they end up kind of getting trapped in their own head when it comes to these rules they've created about style. So when I'm talking to somebody and I say, hey, here's a really nice stylish swap. Instead of doing a hoodie and leggings and a flip flop, you can put on the same amount of things, but you can do a t-shirt and a blazer or you could do a loafer in place of your flip flop, or you could even do a really cute ankle boot. And people get in their heads, they go, I don't wanna wear a blazer, that's so corporate. Or I've even suggested, hey, why don't you try this midi skirt with your t-shirt and sneakers in place of your leggings? Well, skirts, oh, I don't know. Skirts are really formal. And what I want you to think about when you're getting dressed, if you have these hangups, a skirt is just a bottom. A blazer is just a jacket. It's no different than your hoodie or your leggings. It's just as many items of clothing, but those two little swaps can make your outfits look so much more polished and put together and just cooler in general. So I want you to think about these things when you're getting dressed in the morning. Okay, what would be an unexpected thing I could put on with this outfit? And swap out one thing that day. If you change out your leggings for a skirt and you still do your t-shirt and your sneakers, it's adorable. If you trade out your trusty zip up hoodie for a blazer or a military jacket or a leather jacket, even better. But what I did, especially during COVID, is I kind of knew, okay, it's gonna be really easy to get really lazy, so let me go ahead and set myself up for success. I invested in a couple things. One, I invested in cashmere loungewear because if I have to be sad and watch Tiger King, I'm gonna be doing it in cashmere. But what I like about those is I can still throw on a leather jacket and a slide and walk out the door and get mail or walk to the coffee shop and still feel put together and comfortable. And it also makes me just feel a little bit better when I have to work from home or when I'm just hanging out doing nothing. I like to kind of trick my brain into getting dressed every day anyway. And by having a well-rounded closet full of these swaps that are just as easy as throwing on a hoodie, I've set myself up for success and I feel better about myself all day long. So when you're getting dressed, ask yourself, is there a more stylish solution that I could create to this outfit that I'm currently wearing? Is there something that I could throw on that's unexpected that I've already assigned something to that I can make more casual? Could I take something that I used to say for the office or for a night out and go to the grocery store in it? Try it out. Worst case scenario, it's just closed. You can always change them. Hey guys, welcome back to The Peyton Project. On this week's episode, we are talking to my friend Alice Tench about her new book, Eating Again. Alice is an incredible writer, a host of a wonderful cooking show called Instagram to Table, and she just so happens to be married to an actual rock star. So on this episode, we are gonna be talking about fashion, about recovery, style, and her new book. Alice, thank you so much for joining us today. I was telling everyone how we met previously, and we actually met you because uh, of the bag that you were carrying, not because of anything else. We kind of are friends because of fashion in general, which is, mm -hmm. which is nice. And then I found you on Instagram, and I connected with you and your incredible community that you created. 
um, on Instagram to table. So yes. can you tell us more about why you created Instagram to table and what, what was the inspiration behind that and all, everything? I want to know everything. So I started, I remember that I had received yet another um, rejection. And I remember I was, I was heartbroken. And I thought, that's it. I'm not going to try this anymore. It's too painful. I know that is part of the game. The rejection, as we know, is part yeah. of the game. And I just thought that it wasn't for me because I couldn't take it anymore. This was in New York. Yeah. Ben was playing a few shows in New York. And I came back. And I was so, I didn't know what to do. I came back to Los Angeles and where I live. And I had no idea what to do with my life. And I went online on Instagram. I did an Instagram live. There was supposed to be a Q and A. From there, I asked a friend for advice and I had been cooking a little because of my therapy as a, in my eating disorder recovery program and cooking was part of getting to know food and getting to touch food and to smell food. Um, and so one day I just decided to make dinner with the same people. This was the following week yep. with the same people that had joined in the week before, but that to answer your questions, that's how it started. It was not, I never thought that I, it would be a cooking show right. or a community. I needed help. You have a very unique sense of style that I really admire. And I think that part of it is because you have roots that are not just American. Mm -hmm. So what do you think the main difference is in style between Italy and America? I think it depends where in America. And I say this because I was talking to a British friend last night and, uh, and I said, I miss going out and wearing like cool jackets. And, uh, and it's not about the weather. It's about that in LA. And I've really bought into it. Italians take more time to you see more makeup, more, even just to go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. I know, like I spent the summer there and, um, and people dress up more. Yeah. For daily tasks. I try to bring that style a little bit here in my daily activities because I like it because it feels yeah. like you, there's an effort. I feel like it feels like a little edgy and cheap. I mean, I'm in actually the very confusing time of my life when it comes to fashion, because I think that I'm in a confusing time of my life in general. Who I am. Yeah. And uh, I'm also, I'm about to turn 40 and I'm, I have a little bit of an identity crisis where I don't know who I want to be. I don't know who, and I think that the style, you know, you know, yeah. the, way, the way you dress tells a lot about who you are. So I go through these stages of I just want to throw every color away from my closet because color, I'm not color. And I just had a phase during the summer where it was all color. Mm -hmm. And so I really don't know who I want to be. And so I'm not really buying a lot of stuff because I don't yeah. know. You had a goth so, phase too. And I, I love yeah, your throwback goth pictures. I think I never. It never goes away. over that. <laughs> it's never just so, a face. No, I don't know. What do I want to look like? Yeah. And I don't know if women go through that. We do. Uh, and it's, it's mostly, uh, basically the fashion industry has not caught up to the fact that women between 25 and 45 have lives outside of being wives and mothers. We are either um, soccer moms who only want to mm -hmm. wear workout clothes. Even if we don't have children, we're soccer moms. So workout clothes, or we are going to an office. So we're wearing our very bad and tailor pantsuits that are with the shrunken blazers or we're going to the club still trying to find the man so we can be the soccer mom. And if we don't fall into any of those categories, it's kind of like you're on your own. It's true. <laughs> and that's the majority of, I mean, obviously you live in LA, so there's a lot better shop options, but there's still like, that's the majority of the fashion industry. My motto these days is that if it doesn't feel right, it's not right for you. I love that. And I stop buying clothes that don't make me feel comfortable and good yeah I stop buying shoes that don't make me you know feel comfortable and good um and I have the rule of if it doesn't feel good right now it's not, it's not gonna feel, it's not you know no. um because I always had the 
well, but I'm going to lose a few pounds or I'm going nope. to. Nope. No, it's, or like I'm going to put an insole. It's no, you know, if, if it doesn't feel good, then you don't need it. And it's kind of my role in life these days with people, I, I with agree. social media, uh, no judgment, simply life is so, I, I have so much little time yeah. in my life that that little time, I just want to give all the good that I can and receive all the good that I can. I lived all my life thinking that, I, I, that receiving good was not, not for you, for me. And so now it's just, does it do any good? And yeah. what I put out and what I like before I post anything on Instagram, does this do any good? Because yeah. if it doesn't, why am I posting? Well, it's not necessary, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that you can see it in this era of social media. You can really see when people, celebrities, non-celebrities, friends, you can see the intent be behind any sharing mm -hmm. of clothes, food, vacation yeah jill whatever it is and so i always ask myself does this make any good because if it doesn't i'm not going to post it and yeah what i see does this give me anything because if it doesn't then i don't need to follow i wouldn't yeah. you know i wouldn't be in that store i wouldn't follow i wouldn't be friends with that person if it wasn't for social media so why am i yeah. even why am know? i dealing with that uh, yeah i you said something about keeping clothes in your closet that I'm like, well, after I'll lose a few pounds, it'll fit. I have this thing with my clients when I work with them. And they, when they say that you'll appreciate this analogy, I say, okay, I hear you. If you were to open your refrigerator and see that you had milk that had expired like six years ago, do you still have milk? I mean, you have milk, but can you actually use that milk? And it's like having a closet full of clothes that nothing fits you is like having a fridge full of food and half it's rotten. Like you have food, mm -hmm. you have clothes, but you can't use it. And the other thing that I have started kind of applying to my purchasing, you were saying like, if it's on Instagram, I like, why am I doing this? I ask myself when I buy something new, if I were to buy this and not be able to post it or share it with anybody, would I still want it? That's true. And that is something that I, I realized when I started kind of making a little bit more money and I thought I work in fashion, I need to have the wall. I had a wall of stuff for all my videos behind me and I wore like three things. Like, what am I doing this for? Well, who am I trying to impress? I don't actually like half this stuff. It's so true. I own a pair of Louboutins and I will never wear them. Like, why do I have this? Because I thought that I needed them. So I don't come from money. I come from very simple. Yeah. Um, my parents were not rich at all, are not rich at all. Um, money happened to me. And I felt very guilty for how it happened to me. Mm -hmm. um, because I felt like I did not make my own. And, um, and for a long time, I felt like every time that I went to Beverly Hills, which I don't particularly like, by the way, but in order to be allowed on those streets, you had to look a certain way. I had to have the purse yep I bought the purse and guess what I went to Beverly Hills with that purse and the feeling was the same yep you're just, my you're therapist at that time was in Beverly Hills and I remember feeling like whoa what do I need then to belong yeah and and that thing has really changed over the years of and and you know there's nothing wrong with no going through that phase there's nothing wrong with it's beautiful to actually recognize it, you know, yeah. and then, and it's good to love beautiful things. Yes. But it's when why, you, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that question because it's true. Why am I, do I like this thing or do I need to yeah. have it there so that people take me seriously? And it's, it's, I think it's a beautiful thing to go through and, and then recognize and then graduate from. Yeah. And it's, it's something that I've had one, we moved into a house where my, our old house was built in the forties and we had three bedrooms and I had a whole dressing room. And I firmly believe that you grow to fill the space that you have. And then we looked at the house that we are in now, <laughs> two bedroom. And I was like, this is so cute. I love it so much. And then got to the bedroom when I can't live here. There's no closet. I cannot live here. It's, it's genuinely a wardrobe nailed to the wall my, it's this, this big. And I went, I can't live here. Perfect location, perfect price, perfect. Can't live here. 
And I thought, could I get my closet down to 30 things that I loved? And that discipline really made me rethink, why did I buy this? Who was I trying to impress? How often do I use it? And now I have 30 things in my closet and I love every single one of them, as opposed to having a bunch of stuff and I never wear half of it. So that's a really great, that's a good place to be. Hey guys, welcome back to The Peyton Project. On this week's episode, we are talking to my friend, Alice Tench, about her new book, Eating Again. Alice is an incredible writer, a host of a wonderful cooking show called Instagram at the Table, and she just so happens to be married to an actual rock star. So on this episode, we are gonna be talking about fashion, about recovery, style, and her new book. So the social media world led you to a book. Yes. Tell us everything about the book because I've never been I've never been excited for a cookbook until now. Uh, I think I own one Linda McCartney one out of principle. So tell us all about the book. What is it called? Where can we find it? What was the inspiration behind it? Tell us everything. The book uh, that I'm very proud of. I have it here. Let's see. Casually. Casually. (sighs) Oh, I'm so excited. I've never been excited for a cookbook. This is a first. Um, first of all, just very quick thing, how it was born, not as a cookbook. I found myself uh, going on my blog to look for my recipes. <laughs> and uh, and I thought, okay, I need to write Smart. them down because I can't go online every time. No. I don't remember how to make something. And so I started writing them down. And also I wanted Catherine to have them because what my grandmother left me was 30 years of diaries. I have wow. 30 years of my grandmother's diaries that wow. are thoroughly spoken about in this book. Um, and I wanted Catherine to have something similar. Recipe. No, not really diaries, because I've never been, I never had her um, discipline and, and writing. She wrote a, a diary entry every night for 30 years. Wow. Even when she was hospitalized and she had yeah. um, electroshock. Yeah. No matter what, she wrote something on her diary. And it was such a discipline. She would do it every night. And sometimes it was just very simple. Like the day was really, you know, painful and this yes. um, And I really always admired her discipline. I don't have that. Um, so I wanted Catherine to have my recipes. So I started mm-hmm. writing them down. And then I thought, well, I have all these essays that I have been writing and posting on my blog. Um, kind of... I just had this idea. I said, there's a book here and there is. Yeah. A book. And um, so I pitched it and I realized that this book was actually my, my journey of healing uh, from eating disorders. And I, because it's the first time in my life when I can enjoy food and it's because I'm making it and because yeah. I um, Naomi Rosenthal, she's the godmother of this book. This woman believed in me like few people did. And she is this very small indie um, book publisher in New York that wanted to publish my first novel that came out in 2012 is out of print now for several reasons but she wanted to she loved my writing back then when it was much more raw and my English was not as it is now um, and uh, I decided to go with somebody else for the wrong reasons and but me and her we, we remained friends and so when I pitched her this book she was so inspired and so and she put every everything in it Mm. and so I went with her and she has been it's it's a pleasure to work with her I took all the photographs in this book with your phone right my iPhone and my friend Erica Canales um, helped me with the styling and there are I mean these are photos they're beautiful iPhone that we took throughout the pandemic and so it's a collection of um, recipes and essays um, memories from my grandmother, um, recipes from the show, from the Instagram show, um, memories from my childhood. And, um, there's no meat in here. It's not entirely vegan because when I did this, I wasn't hundred percent vegan like I am these days, but it's all vegetarian and it's all 
a journey into my childhood and into my American life. So it's a marriage of, um, of Italian and American. And it's, it's a story of healing. It's a story of, uh, I've had of, those cookies. Uh, those cookies are really, really good. You guys. These are the, this is my story. This is my daughter's hand. Um, Aww. grabbing one of my lemon crackers. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a journey of, of finding my way. I don't, I don't even want to call it a journey. It's called eating again because it's finding my way back. Yeah. That's uh, what everything has been. It's been a full circle moment trying to get back to who who we're supposed to be. It's a huge, it's, it's a, it's a, I, I did the thing and, um, and I came back with something to share and this is the result. And I'm very, very proud of it. Very happy. It comes out on February 8th. Yes. Um, Everywhere book can be found. And hopefully Um, we can see you on a book tour soon. Uh, I'm going to be on the East Coast at the end of February. Perfect. We, there will be more, deta- more details soon, but yes. Definitely. Okay. I have to ask you one final question that I ask everybody that comes on the show. You could trade closets with anybody in the world. Who would it be and why? You could copy and paste every single outfit. It would fit. You just get it right now. Who would it be? Isabelle Aupère. Ooh, I take a lot of, ins- there's a lot of inspiration that I draw from her in my yes. own palette. Um, there's an effort. I, that's who I want to be when I grow up physically. Like I want to age like she does. Um, she aged beautifully, I think. And uh, God, I chose a French one, but not an Italian one. Uh, yes, definitely. I'll forgive it, you. It's, um, I think that it very much defines my idea of fashion. I can see that. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for spending some time and talking about the book. I cannot wait. This is, I've never said this sentence before in my life. I cannot wait to get this cookbook. Uh, Never said that. I live on French fries and coffee. So I'm very excited. Thank you. Can I tell you how really, I, I'm really honored that you asked me to be here because you are doing I'm so happy and proud of you for this show that you're doing. And um, it's a real honor to be here, like, and to be your friend. Um, I really learned a lot from you. It's been a gift of social media and, uh, and uh, Stella McCartney, I guess. So thank you. Thanks. So Maybe she should sponsor this episode. Yeah, <laughs> well, thanks um, so much, Alice. And I will, I will talk to you soon. I'm very sure.